Good Saturday morning, everyone. Welcome back to Weather on the Go, all your weather coverage. In today's weather forecast, I will be tracking a significant clipper system dumping heavy snow across the upper Midwest and the Great Lakes through Sunday night. Then an Arctic plunge will begin the month of February across much of the lower 48. And then an interesting winter storm setting up next week across especially the Southern Plains and the Gulf Coast regions with snow, ice, and flooding rainfall throughout much of next week week. Out the door this morning, it is very cold, especially into southern Canada and even the upper Midwest. We're waking up to temperatures below zero across portions of Saskatchewan, Manitoba, and Ontario, Canada. Some of these areas again into northern Ontario, northern Manitoba, waking up to 30 degrees below zero temperatures this morning. But farther to the south across North Dakota and northern Minnesota, we got single digits below zero here waking up this morning. And then again, farther south, snow-free temperatures were waking Waking up into Oklahoma, Texas, and the Arklatex regions into the 40s here this morning. But up to the north, where we have that deeper cold air with the deeper snowpack, just 24 hours ago, we were 40 degrees warmer across part, parts of eastern North Dakota and northwestern Minnesota. So we are actually 35 to 40 degrees colder than just a day ago here th during the morning hours. So it's definitely a deep freeze starting to move southward into the northern United States today. And it all has to do with this clipper system. We have a significant clipper system moving through. That's an Alberta clipper that did drop from Alberta, Canada, and now is moving east-southeast through portions of the north central plains into the upper Midwest today. And then that will trek its way farther east into the Great Lakes going into the day on Sunday. Matter of fact, we got widespread winter weather advisories in the purples here stretching from Montana down through Wyoming, much of South Dakota northern Nebraska through much of northern Iowa into the western Great Lakes regions and then those winter storm warnings in the pink shade of colors where we see excessive snowfall and heavy snowfall at that going through the next couple of days. But if you are with me on this video, don't forget to press the subscribe button down below to get all of my daily weather forecast updates on this channel. Also press the like button. It's that thumbs up button down below the video. It helps to get all of this weather information out to more and more people here on YouTube. So thank you guys so much. We're almost to 20,000 subscribers. So hit the subscribe button down below, guys, and the like button. It definitely goes a long way in helping me get to 20,000 subscribers on this channel. But looking to the north with that clipper system this afternoon, this is the noon time frame. We're going to see a narrow band, a mesoscale band of heavy snow across northeastern Nebraska. That'll stretch along and north of the I 80 corridor here into Iowa mainly north of the Des Moines region and then stretching farther east across southwestern and northwestern portions of uh, Wisconsin and Illinois toward the noon time frame. That will stretch even farther east towards portions of southeast Wisconsin near Milwaukee and then getting into central portions of Michigan through this evening. We also may have a narrow corridor here down into I-80 and points south into central Illinois where we may have to watch out for some sleet and freezing rain starting to mix in with that warm nose aloft starting to move move up from the south into the system. But then by the time we get to six o'clock in the morning on Sunday, we'll start to push this snow line a little farther to the east, including much of the state of Michigan, eastern portions of Wisconsin, parts of northeastern Illinois. And then we'll start to see some more snow on the backside for areas south of I-80 in Illinois towards Sunday morning as that colder air starts to move in. And then by the time we get into Sunday afternoon, that clipper system will be moving up into southern Quebec, Canada here and toward the Montreal region and then into northern Maine as well with a few more inches of snow accumulation there. But it's all rain across the Ohio Valley, the Tennessee Valley, and the Gulf Coast states. We're talking some heavier rainfall through the day on Sunday. And then back off to the west, maybe some heavier mountain snow across the Rockies going in towards Sunday afternoon. Looking at the stripe of snowfall and what the accumulations could look like from now through Sunday morning, a nice narrow swath here of about 6 to 10 inches from southeastern South Dakota, northeastern Nebraska, getting into western and northwestern portions of Iowa. And then stretching just north of Des Moines here, just north of I-80 there in Iowa into southwestern, southern Wisconsin and far northwestern Illinois up toward the Highway 20 corridor near Rockford, Illinois, stretching back to Dubuque, Iowa. We could be talking about a solid five to eight inches worth of snow and then a solid three to six inches looks likely across central portions of Michigan 
over here toward Grand Rapids, Lansing, and then just to the north of Detroit. Farther to the east, across portions of Toronto, getting up toward Montreal, a good three to six, seven, eight inches of snow could be possible in localized spots with this system. And this will mainly be on the Canadian side, and a lot of this snowfall will be falling farther to the north. We could see a couple inches up here in towards Maine, but it looks like the heavier amounts will be up here into portions of Ontario and Quebec, Canada. We also have to watch out for some some freezing rain accumulation as well. That ice accretion down here along and south of I-80, especially into central Illinois, we could be piling up at least a tenth to maybe two tenths of an inch of ice across these areas now through Sunday afternoon. So definitely something to keep in mind. But this will cause some travel impacts, at least some minor impacts for travel across the central Rockies that'll stretch across the upper Midwest here into southern Wisconsin, northern Illinois, and then back across central Michigan here in the interior parts of New England now through Monday, and we also could see some moderate travel impacts across especially southeastern South Dakota, northeastern Nebraska, and the northern parts of Iowa as we get through this weekend. So definitely take it slow out there. Leave plenty of room between you and the car in front of you as possible if you do have to travel. But far, farther to the south with the system, we're going to see a marginal risk of severe weather across coastal Texas here in southeast Texas, including the Houston area, Tyler, Texas, and then down through portions of southern Louisiana near New Orleans, southern portions of Mississippi and Alabama, and the northwestern side of the Florida Panhandle. And this is also in conjunction with a tornado risk, a 2% tornado risk as well across those same areas in that marginal risk for severe weather through the day on Sunday. So going through the noon time frame on Sunday, we got kind of a mixed mode here of storms. We got some uh, isolated supercells, some multi-cells down here and kind of some line segments on uh, Sunday afternoon. So kind of a messy mode of severe weather. We could have a couple of damaging wind gusts. We could have some large hail. And yes, possibly even a couple of isolated tornadoes with some of these semi-discrete supercells starting at the noon time frame. That will continue into 6 o'clock. Some of this might organize a little bit more, posing a risk for more damaging winds than tornadoes, I do think, going into Sunday night. That'll stretch across Louisiana, down into southern Mississippi, southern Alabama and parts of northwestern Florida, and then that will start to lose its oomph as it moves farther east across portions of southeastern Alabama into central Georgia, going into the wee hours of the morning on Monday, January 30th, around 3 o'clock in the morning. This will, however, be producing lots of heavy rainfall, so even though you may or may not see severe weather, it's going to be producing a lot of heavy rainfall in more of a widespread fashion across the central Gulf Coast states here especially from the Houston area up through Lake Charles, getting up into portions just to the south of Jackson, Mississippi, and just south of Birmingham, Tuscaloosa there into southern Alabama, and then also into southern portions of Georgia. We have a stripe in the purple shaded colors here of at least two to three inches worth of rain, and that is concerning for that marginal to slight risk for flash flooding down here into the central Gulf Coast states from Sunday into Monday here. So definitely something to watch and be mindful of along with that severe weather risk through this weekend into early next week. But it's also about those temperatures here. So today we have that temperature pattern starting to change with those colder Arctic temperatures moving out of Canada into the northern plains in the upper Midwest with that temperature battle zone here with that clipper system. But by the time we get into early next week on Monday, January 30th, we are opening up the floodgates for the Arctic plunge to move all the way south into northwest Texas and parts of the southern plains going into early next week. Week. In fact, looking at the temperatures today, these are your high temperatures below zero all across southern Canada and the northern plains and parts of the upper Midwest today, especially into the Dakotas and Minnesota and parts of northern Wisconsin. Then that temperature battle zone, that gradient between very cold and very warm temperatures, that's where the heavy snow will set up across portions of Iowa, getting into northern Illinois, southern Wisconsin, and then stretching over into central Michigan. But farther to the south where it's all rain, temperatures will be in the 50s and 60s down here today. And then you look at those wind chills later on today. Yes, very, very bitterly cold up here into southern Canada and the northern United States into the Dakotas, Minnesota. We're talking at least 20 degrees below zero wind chills, if not colder, farther north. We could be up near 35 degrees below zero into portions of Saskatchewan, Manitoba, and Ontario, Canada this afternoon into tonight. And then by the time we get into early next week on Monday, 
Monday, January 30th, that freezing line pushes well far south. We're getting rid of the 40s and 50s across the Missouri Valley and parts of the Southern Plains, and we'll see some 20s and 30s down here in Oklahoma, Northwest Texas, especially the Texas Panhandle, and that will lift up through the Ohio Valley and will dampen this ridge a little farther southeast. Still some 80s down here into Florida, so if you have some vacation plans for late January, that is the place to be because look at these wind chills farther north. Do you really want to be where you see wind chills around 30 to 40 below zero? Um, I really wouldn't want to be. So yeah, Florida is the place to go, guys, because it's going to be very cold across the northern United States and much of southern Canada going into early next week. And that is opening the door to a winter storm as well. With that cold air moving south, we're going to see a positively tilted trough setting up across southern California and into the desert southwest on Monday the 30th. By the time we get to the start of February on Wednesday, February 1st, that trough and energy will be pushing across the Baja of California into northwestern Mexico. Yes, this is going to be digging well far south here into the middle portion of next week. And you can see by the time we get into the six o'clock time frame, Monday evening, that low will start to develop across the southwestern United States, bringing some rainfall across southern California and western portions there of Arizona. And then as we move into the 6 a.m. time frame, into Tuesday morning where you're getting ready for work and school out there. We could be seeing a mixture of rain, snow, and sleet, and even freezing rain down here across the panhandle of Texas, getting into southwestern Oklahoma here across the Wichita Falls region, back into Amarillo, Lubbock, and Midland, Texas, and then all rain from the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex on east and southeastward Tuesday morning. And then that will push up into portions near Memphis and the middle Mississippi Valley going in toward the 6 o'clock time frame Tuesday evening with some sleet and freezing rain there. And then another surge of moisture will move up from the southwest here by the time we get into the 6 o'clock in the morning time frame on Wednesday getting ready for work or school. Then we could be talking about more sleet and freezing rain across northwest Texas but looks like all rain for the I-20 corridor on east here into east Texas by that time frame. That will continue with heavy rain across East Texas into northern Louisiana and much of the Gulf Coast states into the Carolinas at 6 a.m. here on Thursday before that system finally starts to make headway to the east across the Carolinas into Georgia and northern Florida by the time we get to late next week on Friday, February 3rd around 6 o'clock in the morning. This system will be producing likely some heavy rainfall from portions of central and eastern Texas on up through the central Gulf Coast states into the Tennessee Valley and the Carolinas, a solid stripe of at least two inches of rain in this maroon red shaded color and even some orange shaded colors showing up into East Texas and Northern Louisiana here. We could be talking about a solid three to four inches here through next week across portions of Tyler, Texas, getting into Shreveport and then on up toward Jackson, Mississippi there. And that's going to be, raise the concern for marginal risk of flash flooding on Tuesday into Wednesday, and then a slight risk for flash flooding Wednesday night into Thursday across much of the Arklatex regions as we get in towards the middle of next week. But we also have to talk about the freezing rain potential as well. These are your low level temperatures in the 850 millibar level. Layer Wednesday morning on the 1st, you see that warm nose aloft moving up into portions of the Red River Valley here across portions of North Texas into southern southern portions of Oklahoma. But at near the surface, we're going to see temperatures below freezing into the middle and upper 20s and low 30s here. So you have the warm nose aloft with those warm temperatures. The precipitation will be falling as rainfall, but then as it reaches the surface, it will refreeze on contact, and that will mean some freezing rain with ice accretion across parts of northwestern and central Texas on up into portions of Oklahoma as we get in towards next. Next week. In fact, the, we are seeing some signals here for at least a quarter to maybe a half an inch of ice combining Tuesday, Wednesday, and into early Thursday morning, three-day period across portions of the Southern Plains getting into the mid-Mississippi Valley here, and that stretches up toward the Memphis area, Little Rock as well, into Southern portions of Oklahoma. And again, this could wobble back and forth to the North and West and Southeast over the next couple of days. We'll be tracking that, however, as we get a little bit closer to 
to give you more details on that. But we also will be seeing some snow out there, not a heavy snowstorm uh, this go around, mainly just some lighter snow, maybe an inch or two up here north side of the Oklahoma City metro area, getting into Tulsa and just north of Little Rock into the foothills here of Missouri. Just a couple inches there, enough to shovel as we get through next week. But by the time we get into next weekend on Saturday, February 4th, we're going to be quieting down. Look at how quiet the weather pattern looks. You can see a lot of H's on here. That is high pressure dominating across much of the United States and southeastern and southern Canada. Getting into next weekend, you hardly see a drop of rain across the eastern side of Florida and hardly a drop of rain across portions of the Pacific Northwest and much of the center of the country will be enjoying lots of sunshine, finally breaking some of the cloud cover out there as we get through that Saturday, February 4th time frame. And that's also in conjunction with the sun and the quieter weather, we'll be seeing the temperatures warm up as well in a big way going into next weekend starting the first weekend in February this is on Saturday February 4th we're easily 10 15 degrees above average across the center of the country by that time but then by the time we get into that following week on Monday February 6th much of the eastern two-thirds of the country from the Rockies on eastward we could be seeing 10 20 even 25 degrees above average getting into that time frame and that's when we're going to start to see milder air moving farther north and east again temperatures will be back in the 40s and 50s across much of the center of the country. That cold will be lingering into the Great Lakes and Northeast on Saturday, and you can see with the temperatures by Monday into the following week on February 6th, some of these 40s and 50s We'll be moving on up into the Mid-Atlantic, the Northeast, parts of the lower Great Lakes with all the cold stretching back up into Canada there. And we'll start to melt some of the snow we do have this weekend across parts of the Midwest, the Great Lakes, and the Northeast during this time frame. Also looks pretty active, I think, going into the second week in February. This is from Saturday, February 4th through Friday, February 10th, getting into the second week in February now. Much of the Pacific West and Northwest will be pretty active. That will stretch a long here across the southern plains into the mid Mississippi Valley and lower Great Lakes region as well. Pretty dry down here across portions of Southern California, Arizona, New Mexico and West Texas however during this period and it looks to set up an active storm track. Into the second week in February we could have one of these Texas hook type of low pressure systems that develop uh, into the panhandle of Texas and then hook their way up and turn, turn left up here in toward the Ohio Valley and the portions of the eastern Great Lakes on the northwest side of the low so you could definitely see some heavier snowfall potential with several inches of snow and then on the southeastern side of these low pressure systems you see more heavy rainfall and stormy weather with some severe weather possible again with that ridge coming back across the southeastern United States and then drier weather will continue across southern California, southern Nevada, Arizona and western New Mexico into the second week in February. So to recap my weather forecast for you guys, significant clipper system moving through this weekend through the Midwest and the Great Lakes region into southeastern Canada. Heavy snow through Sunday night. Arctic plunge will make its way farther south into the northern United States and eventually the southern plains into early February. Then an interesting winter storm setting up next week across the southern plains in the mid-Mississippi Valley and the southern plains as well. We're talking about snow, ice, and flooding rainfall during that time and maybe even some severe weather as well. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. I definitely appreciate it. Remember to like the video down below, give it a thumbs up, leave any comments, questions, and concerns below. I'll get to those later on today. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you're new and hit the notification bell to get all of my daily weather forecast updates on this channel. Have a great Saturday, everybody. A great rest of your weekend, and I will see you all in the next video.